Hey, what's happening? Paul Ingram here, Collie Center. Welcome back to our drill a day. We are on week five, day seven. It is the last day of our empty hands training together within this series, drill a day. So all we need is our body today. We're gonna to be combining some of the different movements that we have worked on all throughout the week. So, this is your payment to continue on your training with me today. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. And give me one of these as we're closing out our empty hands. Let's go ahead and get to the training. Today's combination, we're bringing together the different aspects of the empty hands that we worked on throughout the week. So today's drill consists of a combination and uh, we're gonna call it seven movements. Even though there's technically nine movements, but we're gonna call it seven movements. We're gonna start this off with the left lead. Okay, we're gonna go into what's called our gunting, okay, right here. When we solo train the gunting, you can do it like this, but sometimes we do it as like double number one parries right here. That way we're learning to not overextend our hands. We don't want our hands to go past the shoulders. So I'm gonna step out on that left 45. There's a little bit of footwork here. I'm starting in the left lead, I step left 45, and I go into that gunting right there. I'm gonna finish my diamond footwork going into my two hack with my four triangle right here, and then my number one slap on that left hand. I'm gonna follow this up as if I'm coming into quarto range with a powerful knee and an elbow. If the person starts getting away or we needed to go into more of breaking their balance, their structure, we have the oblique kick right here. And then we can follow it up with some Ponantukin, cross, uppercut, cross, or cross, hook, cross. I want you to kind of play with those variations right there. All right, let's take another look at the drill. Left lead starting out. We step off left 45 as we go into this gunting, hit that number two as we step up on forward triangle and slap number one on the left hand. We're gonna go into our knee and our elbow followed up with the oblique kick. And then cross, uppercut, cross, all right? So let's count out the movements. Make sure we got all the movements. We count them as seven, even though there's nine movements. Let's count them out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this combination we count as one, which is seven right here, okay? Right there. Let me show you the drill from a couple different angles so that way you can see it, pick up some details from a few different viewpoints. Let's work this one out together nice and slow. So let's go ahead and get round one in together. We're gonna work it out 10 repetitions. Remember, 10 reps equals one round. So we're gonna get round one done together, and then after that, you can finish off the rest of your 10 rounds on your own. All right, let's do it. Nice and slow here, starting off with that left lead. Step left 45, gunting right there, both hands. Right 45, there's that two hack, followed up by the left hand number one slap. Come up with that left knee, right elbow, right oblique kick, and then off that left lead, cross, uppercut, cross, right there. Rep number two. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Number three. You can even put the hook in there if you want. Rep four, nice and slow. Rep five. Rep six, let's do it slowly. Do it kind of like Tai Chi style.
slow and smooth. All right, rep seven. Eight, just a tiny bit faster. Still focus on smoothness. Okay. Number nine. Number ten. If you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. Just don't count that rep. Okay, just do it all over again. All right, number ten. Boom. Uh oh. I made a mistake. Darn it. Oh, I gotta do number 10 all over again. Okay, it's okay. Boom, man. Pop. Right there. All right, let's do two more for good measure, just to have some fun with it, get a few extra reps in for round one, and just kind of speed it up just a little bit more. All right, and 12, last one. There you got it, drill seven to week five on the empty hands, combining the pon and tukin, the closed fist stuff, the pongamut, the open fist, the close quarter heavy artillery of elbows, knees, some of the parry system, some of the uh, kicking, the sakaran, uh, and we can combine all this into one drill. Now, if you are feeling extra beast mode today, what I want you to do is once you finish your 10 rounds in the left lead, see if you can merit and do 10 more rounds in the right lead. I want you to have to do the work to figure that out. So that way you gotta put some thinking into your training. That's one thing to just be instructed movements, but then we have to be able to deconstruct and then reconstruct things as practitioners. In my school of belief, there's different levels of teaching. There's the instructor, the instruction, where you're giving the step-by-step -step process. Then there's the teaching, where the teacher allows the student to go and investigate, to go explore something on their own, play with different variations of it. And then there's the coaching level or the mentoring level, and that's where now you know, you're just kinda getting coached along through you know, actual application. So as we're working out, we're training together, then you know, if there's something that needs help coaching through the application of a tactic or being able to read timing or measure range or something like that, then you know you get that advice from the coach while you are in the play with the coach, okay? Something I don't believe in is, is coaching from the sideline. So we like to make sure we're involved while we are coaching with our students, with our practitioners. All right, so that's just kind of my own you know, belief on it, on the different levels of you know, teaching, instructing, coaching, all that stuff. So I want you to do that in this one. I gave you the instruction off the left lead. Now I'm gonna be your teacher. You gotta go explore it off of the right lead if you're feeling beast mode today. Thanks so much for joining me on week five of our Drill A Day series, working on some of the empty hands. You know, this whole series right here is just a tiny little taste of what Kali has to offer across all these different areas that are involved in Kali. You know, we only have seven days. We're only spending seven days, seven drills per area of Kali here. So if this Drill A Day series is driving a lot more interest for you to study Kali at a much deeper level, head over to KaliCenter.com and check out our further training materials that we have available for you over there. We have a lot of our training courses, our DVD downloads, we have our Apex coaching program that's available. I got a, a discount code to some of our programs and DVD downloads and all of our training materials down in the description box below. So go check that out, take advantage of the discount if there's anything that you see that you'd like to grab and train the material and continue your study deeper in the art of Kali with us here at Kali Center. All right guys, I will see you back here tomorrow for week Six, can you guess what we're gonna be training on week six? It is the absolute, listen carefully, it is the absolute number one most important skill in Kali. Probably in all martial arts, but especially in Kali. Can you put in the comments below what you think next week's training is gonna be all about? And then also comment below once you finish your 10 rounds, 
done for today's drill, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. So remember, get outside. It's raining on me right now. Don't have excuses, guys. You gotta get outside and let nature be your Kali Dojo. See you tomorrow. <laughs>